All right, everybody, welcome back to season eight of the Eagles. It's a brand new start, and I want your input. We didn't make Europe because we lost to PSV in that playoff final thingy. Um, so no European football. And I wanted to hit the reset button and try something different tactically. Like, you know that I'm not too much of a lover of 4-4 team. I ne uh, sorry, 4-2-3-1. I nearly changed the style completely and went for my Everton 4-4-2 to add a bit of goals and excitement into the save. And then I backpedaled and thought, no, we'll keep it as it is. I just want your input. What would you like to see me transform this team into? It's kind of turned into a little bit of a player thing. We're still a million miles off Ajax. No European football this year, so it may mean that we can really focus on the league and have a really strong campaign. We've sold a lot. We've bought a lot. I think there's 11 players that have come in, around 9 or 10 have left, spent the most in the Air Divisie. I think we've spent £17 million in this transfer window. All right, guys, let's go and meet them. So, one of the big ones, Gunez has gone to Ajax of all clubs. We've got a nice little fee for him, 17.25, and it has helped to strengthen in different areas. We've still actually got 9.69 million left. Massive amount to spend in the transfer window in January. Um, I wanted another striker, couldn't get it, so we've left it in there. So that just shows the amount of money that we've still got at the club. And the bank balance itself is looking phenomenal, £19 million. Pounds. So it's put us in a really good step. We've improved the training facilities as well with that. He has gone, look, he, you know, five goals playing as an inside forward on the right hand side. I don't think he's good enough. Ten and five. I thought we'd cash in while he had a decent stock. And yeah, he's gone. He was happy to go. Players weren't, but I think we're going to be okay. Ethan Laird, as you know, he was leaving. He's gone to Sparta Rotterdam on a free. Really disappointed, actually, to let him go. So he was just a nice little backup because he could do both sides. Reese Nelson is another big earner to go. Well, not big earner, but big fees. He's 29, so he was hitting. He's going to be 30 this year. He was hitting the definitely his peak years or past his peak. Never quite kicked on. He looked okay. A lot of his better performances was actually coming off the bench. 26 appearances, 11 starts. I just didn't think he was going to be... The replacement for Gunez, obviously definitely not long term. And then with his value kind of high, I thought it made sense to cash in. So I was really happy to get 8.25 million for him. And Kamo, so the guy that I actually thought was going to be a goal scoring machine, never turned out that way, has gone to Camber. So he stayed in Holland, which is good. Uh, we'll track his progress. You know, he hasn't kicked on at all. He, he looked, he had a bit of pace, a bit of finishing. And apart from that, he was very, very poor in other areas. He's still got one for tackling. Ted Kurd as well, backup goalkeeper. We got him on a free, played him for sort of like two seasons. Uh, last season, last season he didn't play at all. The second season he came in, kind of been our number one. Then this season, as you can see, there's a gap there. Didn't actually play for us at all in that 28-29 season. And then Van Oydonk, I just felt like his price was at a decent level. We got... 2.4 million for him. He was on the way down. He is going to be 30 this season. Um, two and a half star, lacking in pace. We've obviously strengthened in the striking area as well. Um, was looking at being maybe third choice striker, maybe even fourth choice striker behind Fafana. So, yeah, a little bit of a legend, but it made sense. You know, I'm, I'm always keen with this save as well to make maximise money as best we can. So that's why we've let Van Oudon go before he was no doubt going to go on a free transfer. And the other noticeable is Christian Gravenson. We got him last year. Um, he's just going out on loan for the season. He started really well, 7.28. He's gone back to Denmark. He's gone to AAB. He'll have a really good season. We've strengthened tremendously well at centre-half as well. So he was going to be even further down the pecking order. They're still highly rated, potential four and a half star. So hopefully a good year's football for him will do really, really well. Right, on the ins. Um, first one, Ajax, Tigerland, Dutch, holding midfielder, nothing fancy. He's got a few nice little um, attributes, acceleration, balance, natural fitness is good, decisions, flair, aggression, first touch, passing, vision 14, tackling 14. So it's going to be a nice little sitter in one of those two halfback or even be a Volante role. So yeah, he's in, pretty cheap, free transfer, four, four, four grand a week, easy transfer to make. As I said, we want to try and get some Dutch players in as best we can just to pad out the squad. Francisco Conceição has come in. Now, I wasn't going to play him as a... He was supposed to be the replacement for Gunez. And then I've signed someone else on loan that I thought was spectacular. 
and he's turned out to be shit. So we will see Francesco Conceição play today from the from the start. He's had three appearances so far in the air division, all off the bench. So yeah, we're going to give him a run. Dribbling 16, long shots 11, technique 15, flair 19. I even think Ajax are paying some of his wages. I'm sure Ajax are paying. Ajax are paying 10 grand of his nine grand wage. So for the first, for this year, we're not actually paying any of his wages and we got him at a nice little price as well. 1.3 million. It's kind of the level that we're at now. 1.3 million, you know, multiple million pounds now for some of these players. So yeah, good acceleration. Never really kicked on at, at uh, Ajax. Obviously, competition, competition really strong there, but he's got a few nice little attributes. Dribbling, technique, flair. Uh, work rate's not bad as well. Off the ball's good. Yeah, I think he will prove to be a nice little pickup. And then this is the guy that we I thought was going to be the replacement. He's only on loan. We've paid a bit of loan. £1.3 million. And he's absolutely stunk the place out at first. Decent pre-season, but we didn't really play anywhere in pre-season. He's had an average rate of 6.53. But look, crossing, dribbling, first touch, passing, technique... Flair, determination, pace is decent as well. Very strong on his left foot, decent right foot. I thought he was good. He, he will get in. He will no doubt be a useful addition to us this season. We've got him on loan from Dortmund. Um, so there you go. I can't even pronounce his name. Omar Radzic. We'll go with that. Let's see how he develops over the season. Um, no doubt will be too good for us next season. But hopefully Fran Francesco Conceição can do a job and keep him out of the side. Our new striker is a loan signing. There just wasn't that quality. And then when this guy came up on loan from Chelsea, 1.3 million, we have gone with it. Florian Brauer, Austrian striker, six foot one. At the time, I was thinking, shall we go 4 4 2? And he could be a bit of a target man. Six foot one, pace, composure, determination, flair, off the ball, technique, finishing, dribbling, all exceptional. Comes deep to get the ball. Links play pretty well. We're paying a lot. Obviously, his wages and stuff. Paying 15 grand of his wages. But I just wanted to score some goals this year. And I've signed a striker. A young striker to maybe be the, the potential step up. But just for this season, hopefully Florian Brow will be the guy that puts us back into Europe. Which we're going to talk about in a minute. We've got a new sub-keeper, Pele Bovink. Obviously, we lost uh, Ted Kerr. We needed a backup keeper. He's come in. He's 31. He was in non-league of Germany. Uh, yeah, he's just a very average backup keeper. We're happy to be backup. Cheap, cheerful, Dutch. Free transfer, backup, left back is Martin Frieser. Has just generally been in Denmark all of his career. Has he played at international? He hasn't. Not even any youth caps. Just a little bit of an all-rounder. He's very average across the board. Tackling is okay. Strength and that, not great. I'm not anticipating him to play much because of the, the other play that we've got left back and because we've not got that many games without any European football. He's here on what? A one-year deal. He will no doubt leave at the end of the season, but we just wanted to bring him in. We have got a youth team player as well. Felix de Kock. Someone did say in the comments about his progression being a left back. And going out to like an amateur, like a backup side, he actually had a really good season and his attributes actually did improve over the course of the season. He just hasn't kicked on technically. His physicals are looking really good, but we may give him a little bit of a go at left back. Still says four and a half star. So yeah, we might we might just go with Felix de Kak as backup this season. But the starting left back is Andrea Bulzi. We've paid 3.6, which I thought was a little bit on the dear side, but what I like about him is good physicals. Decent medals, once again, quite good, decent across the board, tackling 12. Um, I was looking at his long throws to see if we'd exploit that a little bit. Dribbling and crossing is good. Yeah, he looks decent in the match engine. He looks nice. He's just going to be a little bit of a steady Eddie for us. But um, we were panicking a little bit. We were panicking. I wanted someone in before sort of like pre-season kicked off with games and stuff. So we've got him in 3.6. I think if I only had 5 million to spend, I wouldn't have paid 3.6 on him. But... He was kind of the best of a bad bunch without really going way deep into the transfer market and spending like up to £10 million. Martin Rattage is a youth prospect who is in our reserves. We've got him for 60 grand. He is 20 years old, not going to be 21 till the end of the season. Some really nice rentals. Physicals are getting there in terms of pace. Only five foot eight, but his strength is eight, so not too bad. Technique, 17, and then decent crossing, dribbling, first touch. Good mentals in there in terms of teamwork, leadership, flair, and determination. Look, he's in the reserves. He costs us 60 grand. He's on six grand a week. We'll probably make a profit on him. So um, if he doesn't turn out to be an absolute superstar. Right, this is the striker 
that I signed when I thought we'll go 4-4-2 and we'll do my Everton tactic, target forward and stri- striker. And uh, this was the guy. I got him from Estudiantes. Never played a game. But 16 finishing, 20 determination, 15 pace, 15 technique, 15 off the ball, good balance, good agility. I don't know how much that matters for sort of like strikers. But uh, And also he's called Signorelli. And I just thought of Giuseppe Signori. Uh, he's worth now between 14 and 7.5, 17.5. So the game is the game is fancying him. He's not made a great start. I'll have you that. He struggled. I'm still undecided. I'm going to let you guys decide at home. I will show the Everton tactic in a bit. Um, whether we change the whole team and kind of go for this new style, which will mean Maximiliano will get more games. What was we prepared for him? 4.4 we played for him as well. And probably the best signing of the summer is Antoine Andre. He is Czech Republic centre half, already valued at 23 to 27 million pounds. He's got a minimum release clause to Champion League clubs of 23. We paid 5.25. I had tracked him for a number of seasons. Um, six foot one, both footed, 14 marking, 16 tackling, passing not great, um, but heading good. Tremendous mentals, tremendous physicals. He's only 20. He's going to be soon. No, he's just turned 20. He has just turned 20. So he is starting every single week. See if we can get a good tune out of Antoine Andre and probably another player down maybe two or three seasons down the line. We say goodbye. Thank you very much. And we cash in and make a big profit. And then coming at the end, Hans Hatterbar. Dutch, I kind of felt that we needed another player. I'm pretty sure I've sold Clubinho. And I've not mentioned it. Or he's going. I think Clubinho is going. Yeah, he's going. He is going. I've sold him. He's going in January. But that was on the fact that we've signed Hans Hans Hatterbo. 14 pace, 17 natural fitness at the age of 35. He's Dutch. And I thought, why not? Let's get him in. We need that. We need that experience. And he's made a really good start. Three assists in only three Air Division games. Two starts, one sub. Looks really good down this right-hand side. Complete wing-back as well. We're pushing him down this right-hand side. So, yeah, there it is. Hans Hattenbaugh, really happy that he's come in and made an immediate impact. So, the tactic is the 4-2-3-1. That we've been rocking with. No real changes. Um, apart from the inverted winger now on support instead of inside forward because we're now going to try and get Hatterbaugh in these areas, which he has done on numerous occasions. Everything has stayed the same. My other option is to go to this. So it's a 4-4-2 with an inverted wing back, wide midfields. We need a creative spark in there, an attacking central midfielder really hitting the sort of like the, the penalty area and then a target forward and advance forward. So that would be Brower and Signorelli. I'm going to train it. I'm going to train it. It's going to be there. And I think if we need a little bit of a change halfway through, We'll go with it. But this is, guys, for you now to let me know down in the comments. Where do you want this team to go? What style? Any ideas? I'm not going to necessarily follow any of your ideas. I've got to be totally honest. But something might just spark my interest. Have a think about the players we've got. You know a lot of them now, what we've got. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Last thing. Um, Feyenoord were actually given a group stage Champions League. I don't know how it worked because they should have given us an extra place. And they didn't. But basically, us and England had the best coefficient. So they awarded us an extra Champions League place. Because our coefficient was so good with us getting to the final, we jumped up like... I'm sure I took some screenshots. There. Netherlands and England clinched highest coefficient spots for UCL. Final Rotterdam and Manchester England have now quali- teams qualify from each nation. It meant they'd... I don't understand because we'd all, they'd already qualified for the Champions League. I don't understand it. It was actually before the season kicked off in June. So, yeah, a bit weird. We rose 106 places to 90 seconds. So, we've made a massive impact this season. Unfortunately, no European football. So, we can't kick on from there this season. But the big one, we got the Champions League spot. That spot that we lost, like, what, a year ago, two years ago, whatever it was. We've now, we've now, got, it, we've now got it back. Uh, so two teams get in the Champions League group stage and one. So top three Champions League and then Europa, Conference League places. There must be a Europa. We must get a Europa League place. But they've changed that. We've got an extra team by the looks of it in there. Let's have a little look how that's working. So we'll back up. Two Champions League, three Champions League, two group stage one. Europa League, we get one in there. So that'll be like for the fourth place or the cup winner. And then we get, yeah, 
playoffs. Two, three, four, five, six places up for grabs for Europe this year, which generally means, obviously, the top five, and then sixth, seventh, eighth, and nine. I would like to finish fifth to get into the Europa League. No, what am I saying? I'm talking bollocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we need to finish fourth. So top four would be amazing. We may well do it. I'm not entirely confident with the squad and the team, but we will see. All right, guys, we're going to... I better show you my league. Decent pre-season. We had a poor result at UFC Utrecht, conceding, losing out 2-1. Started the season at home against Roda, Florian Brower scoring two, and then we've just beaten NEC, uh, Foda, Fafana, and Dorami getting on the score sheet. Right, um, <laughs> we've had a bit of disaster. We've had an international break, and uh, Hotterball got injured, Konse Sao's got injured, so you won't see them today. Bazicic, you will see. I'm a little bit worried that I thought Andre, uh, Antoine Andre had a decent passing, but he doesn't. He has passing of nine, but we'll go with it. He does actually look... What's his dribbling? Because he looks sensational. Dribbling a nine, he does look sensational when he's dribbling with the ball. Lekovic can come in. Who has just been capped by uh, Serbia for the first time. So he's in good form. Brower up front. So we've got Fabian and Raskin. Uh, let's bring Omar Dazic in on that right-hand side. Bulls, Bullies are at, Bullies are at left back. Brower, he said, yeah, we'll, we'll just see how this tactic goes. Oh, we want your thoughts. Do we go to that 4 4 2? Right, we're playing Adod and Hag. It should be a standard win. I've kind of changed the mentality as well. I just thought we were just, in some of these games, we're just a little bit too passive against some of these teams. So I've just turned the tempo up again and we've turned the risk up as well to attacking, especially in these home games where we're expected to win. Right, Omar Azic. Bazicic. I know I'm saying that wrong. I know I'm saying it wrong. Oh, we get a pen. Are we getting a pen? I think we are. We are. Ian Matson did look at him. He's just technicals are just lacking a little bit. He's got a yellow card. He's taking our penalties. Oh, God. I don't know why he's... This is our centre-half. Andre. He's missed it. Like, why is he taking penalties? Someone tell me why. Tell me why. Penalty taking 11. Why? It wouldn't be the first person that you'd do, would it? Or maybe, yeah. It would be. Apparently, he's the best penalty taker we have. Let's put Florian Brow in there, shall we? Just let the striker just hit it. Right. That's why. Oof. Right, we're in control of the game, though. I'm happy. I'm happy. That shouldn't, fingers crossed, have too much of a effect on the game. As Bazicic nicks it off their left winger, he finds Collard... Who finds the Rami? You're way offside, bud. Oh, line flagman stayed down. That was a chance. He looked absolutely miles off. 16 minutes. We're already on eight shots. They've not had a shot themselves. Right. Bulzia. Lovely clipping. De Rami. Bulzia. Oh, good save from the keeper. Bazicic. Rebound, maybe. Hits it the post. Oh, no. Is it going to be one of these games? We've had 10 chances. 1.62 XG. 64%. Is this going to be a typical Eagles performance? Right, off we go. Play out from the back. Letkovic. Andre. Now, what I have done is with Gorta, he was on sweeper, keeper, on support, which does normally mean that even though I'm asking him to play short, he does often play it a little bit longer. So I've put him on defend, which should mean he always passes it short when he can do. Because that's what cost us towards the end of last season. Right, Bulzia. Raskin. Good, Durami. We're still decent in possession. We're still trying to knock it short. I want us to take a few more risks. That's a great pass. Here we go, Omar Azic. He needs to get some numbers. That's a terrible pass. We could see the 4-4-2 before the game is even out, boys. We could see the 4-4-2. I'm even thinking as well, Bazicic could do a job on this right-hand side for us because it's a wide... Oh, it's a wide midfielder. Don't ask him to dribble. He's just going to clip balls over the top. I had James Ward-Prowse doing it. If you followed the Everton series, James Ward-Prowse doing that. Sit narrow as well to help the middle midfield out. And he was so good at it. Just clipping balls for like the strikers to run onto. What is going on here? They are never going to score in a million years, are they? We've nicked it. Fabian just signed a new deal as well as Fabian. So he's with us for the foreseeable, which is really good. Only wanted an extra grand a week. What a superstar. Right, seconds. Bullsier. 
He's quite tidy in these areas. He's got a really good goal in pre-season. Giovanni Fabian has hit an absolute beauty. All the chances that we've created, and it's a little bit of magic that finally puts us 1-0 ahead. Bulzia, just simple. He's just tidy. Simple pass. He's getting an assist for that. But that is spectacular. Let's praise it. Can we get another? We may just go to the 4-4-2 in a second half. We'll experiment, shall we? Just see how we see. Let me see how it looks. Let's just see how it looks. Because I'm not 100 percent on Collard. We'll have a look at his. Oh, we've got a goal. Collard. What a goal that was, by the way. Is looks good. He looks good on the eye here. But he he had 20 appearances in the league, and they were pretty much all from attacking mid. Three goals, one assist from an advanced playmaker. Not the numbers that we want. What a goal, by the way. Omarazic has got his first little bit of goal contribution with the assist, so that'll help his confidence. Good win from Collard, to be fair. Raskin into Omarazic. Good pass. The Ramey, Wallop. He's up and running as well. We don't want him to start like he normally gets going after Christmas. We want a full season from De Ramey, and that penalty miss doesn't look like it's cost us at all. Right, I'm not going to go to the 4 4 2, and I'll tell you for why. Because I'm going to have to take off one of the wide players in Omarazic and the Rami. I don't want to do it um, because we obviously want to try Bazicic as the wide midfielder. He would be actually really good at it. He says he can't, but he would be very, extremely good at it. How do we just do it with that squad? So, well, let's, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Keep talking myself out of it. We'll do it, right? Let's get Signorelli on. Fabian and Raskin. Rami on the left. Omar Azic can just play as the uh, right midfielder. Fullback. Let's have fullback on support for Bulzia. It just needs to be a central defender for uh, Letkovic. And we'll do a ball playing defender on defend for Andre. But we'll get him to dribble more because that is a fantastic PI, as I keep saying, for FM22. 20, 22? 23. We're in FM23 now, right? Right. Let's see. We could, I want Signorelli to score. We need him to score some goals because I'm a bit worried that it's going to be a 4.4 million flop, which for us is a lot of money. Right, Andre on the ball. Raskin, nothing has happened. We're in 20 minutes to go. We are playing a little bit more direct. It might be just a tactic that we go to to change it up. We may even put the two wide players as like attacking areas rather than they're going to fucking score. Jesus Christ. Um rather than the sort of like the midfield slots and just something we go to just to change it up. Right, that's a disaster, boys. Like Signorelli, he's going to be like a massive flop. He's going to be, look at this. Like, I haven't done my set pieces, I'll be totally honest, but why on earth do football manager feel that's necessary? Right, Letkovic, Fabian. A, a set piece, so you could just get someone to do your set pieces. So they're actually proper routines, simple routines, but just all players sorted. Right, set piece takers. Brower's in. He scores. I think he's onside. We need him to be onside just to secure the three points. He is onside. Get in. 3-1. Job done. Signorelli with the assist. He'll be happy. That'll get his average rating up. Right, Letkovic. Bazicic. Inverted winger. Inverted wing back, sorry. Omarazic. We're not asking him to dribble more now. He just clips ones over. So the idea is that he clips them over to run on to Brower. Signorelli! I'm, the goalkeeper was out of his goal. Now, whether if he was ahead of the goalkeeper, there was two defenders back there. We'll find out. It's awarded. He's got himself a goal. Now, it does cause a little bit of panic because we're looking at clipping these balls over the top to the two strikers. Good, good header in there from Fabian. Brower to Signorelli. Easy tapping. He's come off the bench. He's got a goal and an assist. What do we do? Now, I'm not going to be playing this series until later on in the week. So if you're watching this over like the next few days, I'll probably not pick up this save until about Friday. So you've got a few days, guys, to let me know. Where do we go with this side? Where do we go with this side? Now, I have done a tactics video on this, the 442. I did it a couple of weeks ago. So make sure you check that out. Have a look at it, see how you think, and uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know which of the signings takes your fancy. Maximiliano Signorelli, what a name that is. What a name. I could see myself maybe even getting an Eagle shirt someday with Signorelli on the back. He's up and running. Right, guys, take care. Thanks for watching.
See you later.